men overall don't really talk kind of openly because it comes down to judgment at the end of the day. It's, it's a known fact that, and I've been very open about trying to take my life and I totally did that. I tried to take my life. So I was South London born, loved being outside, just got up to mischief, playing in school football, getting in all the teams, signed for Crystal Palace. 17 years old I was when I made my professional debut and I scored. It was probably, I'd say, one of the best days of my life. So after Crystal Palace, I went on to play for Peterborough. That's where I kind of made my, my name as a, as a goal scorer. Probably scored every other game, really. So after um, Peterborough, signed for another fantastic club in Norwich. I would have liked to have stayed a lot longer. Yeah, again, injuries sort of come into play. Injuries was, was a massive part in my football career that was detrimental to my mind. If everything's going fantastic on the field, but it's not going so great off it, there's a willingness to try and cope and try and hang on because everything's going great on the field. But once the two are not going great, then the, the mind can kind of start messing with you. When I actually scored a goal against Man United and several other goals, I was actually going through some of the hardest times at that particular time in my life. No one would ever know because I was a good pretender. I pretended a lot when I left and went home and I spent a lot of time by myself. You know, things really kind of hit home for me. After Norwich, went on to play for Coventry for three years, injuries again. And then I, unfortunately, when I did get to Charlton and my body still continued to break down, that's when I kind of knew like I was, you know, I was in a bit of trouble. I remember pulling my hamstring in training at Charlton. It was like someone took my heart and took it out of my chest. The pain I felt from leaving the training ground to going to the physio was just like, I actually want to kill myself, like I don't want to be here anymore. I went back into the treatment room, I sat on the bed and I burst into tears and cried. And there was a lot of people that was walking past. This is why I do what I do now, <clears throat> because there's an understanding factor that comes into it and I don't think people really speak to someone that they might see crying, especially a man. I was staying in a hotel, felt very isolated, felt very, very alone. It's, it's a known fact that and I've been very open about trying to take my life. And I totally did that. I tried to take my life. And that led to, fortunately, me waking up in hospital and uh, having another chance. My dad's my best friend. My dad was one of the people that found me because he's the, he's the person I called. Leon sort of followed me from an early age and uh, I think he's always had boxing in his blood. With boxing, what it provided at a time in my life was extraordinary. I, I think my advice to anyone that's kind of lost their self in life is to reinvent yourself. And that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I had 11 professional fights. And I fought for British Eliminators, I fought for English titles and Southern Area titles and won an International Masters title. If you've seen in my football career and I fight for everything, same in when I went into boxing, I fight till my body can't literally go on anymore. It's the same how I take life. Men have this, you know, pride factor that comes into place and that's what I'm trying to change. That's why, you know, I'm doing 10 Count, the film. I know that is going to open up a lot of doors for men to be able to come forward and have the confidence to be able to speak. If you can make someone feel better through generosity or life experiences, I think that's pretty inspiring and, and it's a nice inner peace that you hold through your own journey because you know that through what you've spoken about is going to help another person and if not save a life.